I love this place. Wow, this is just unreal. Are you ready to start traveling the world once again? We are going to show you the most amazing way to do it. All right, wow, what a place. There are over 3 million vacation rentals at your fingertips. They come in all shapes and sizes. Look at that! This is crazy and weird, and I'm into it. I'm a DIY designer. I'm going to be your guide to budget-friendly rentals. <sighs> I've traveled to over 50 countries. I'm going to take you off the beaten path to show you unique vacation rentals. Gorgeous. I've been selling high-end real estate in New York. I will show you the most beautiful luxury vacation rentals around the world. You see that house on top of the cliff? Hey! I can't believe you can rent this. The beauty about staying in our vacation rentals is it's not just about the house. Okay. That's the show called The World's Most Amazing Vacation Rentals that George uh, created and executive produced. Just you and I have talked about the production of this, of how you did this show. But it's insane. And you did it during COVID. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was unexpected. We, you know, my producing partner, Will Spute, and I created this. And uh, we had a great team of people and we created it in 2019 and we, we sold it to our friends at, at Netflix. We'd done a, a, another show there called Stay Here, which was in the space of vacation rentals, how to start. It. So we sold it and they said, oh, we want 16 of them. Let's go. And we were, oh, great. This is this is a dream come true. We'll travel the world and this will be easy. You know, we just go to amazing, beautiful places and tell fun stories and come home. And then we started shooting in January of 2020, and we we shot in uh, the first three were in Hawaii, and then you know I started hearing about this thing going on in China. Yeah, and I was like, you know, maybe I'll buy some masks just in case. And I bought like a hundred a box of like a hundred masks, and the yeah. crew thought I was crazy. We only had a small crew of like 12 of us traveling, but I told the crew, look just in case, why don't we put these on when we go to Japan? Because we flew from Hawaii to Japan. Yeah. By the time we got to Japan, it was late. It was early, late January, and everyone was masked there. I, so, Well, and they've then, always been good about masks in, in yeah. Japan, but somewhere in that eight-hour flight of yours or whatever yeah, it was, the whole world took thing. over. That's right. And then, you know, we, we went from Japan. We shot there, three places there, and then we went to Bali, and then by the time we got on the plane in Bali, we were going to Finland. We were going all the way around the world. We were wow. traveling. We went through Qatar and then over. And boy, people were hacking on the plane. And I'm like, this doesn't really seem so good. <laughs> wow. I don't know. And then we kept going and we got to the Caribbean after Finland. We went to the Arctic Circle. We were up there for a while, sleeping in igloos. And then we went down to the Bahamas. And we were there and then we went to the Dominican Republic and then this was March 2020. And then we were all like, we were on this private, this resort, this beautiful, like $20,000 a night place. And everyone was like, we're too afraid to go back to the United States. Yeah. We, don't want, we can't it's do safe. it. Everyone was terrified. It was like mid-March, every airport was shutting down. And finally, I just said to Netflix and everyone, we got to stop. We can't keep going. So we, long story short, we shut down, came home weeks later. And Netflix was so good to us. They gave us, you know, they took care of us for a while. They understood, you know, people had booked their year thinking we were going to do this. Right. And the team over at Netflix was amazing. And then they said to us about a month later, look, there's a possibility if this gets under control, we may want to use you because, you know, you guys go back out and keep going. How would you feel? How could you come up with a way of doing this safely? And that's where we spent like two months figuring out how to do it and safely. And this was before vaccines or anything. And then we went back out in July and we ended up doing a bus a bus tour around the United States. We got a tour bus. We went all over the U.S. in a tour bus and we took as few flights as we could. But because we were in these vacation rentals by ourselves, we were in like a bubble. Right. So as long as, and we couldn't go out at night. It's kind of so like that movie, The Village, like you can't wander off set. That's right. You yeah. might get COVID. Well, that's, and the crew was going nuts because they they like to go out yeah. and, you know, shake, sure. shake. That's out why part of the reason you get a job is you want to go to the local bar and have beers. Yeah, yeah. You're in all these fun places and you can't go to the local bar and boy, they were not happy. So yeah. And then we had to have all our meals brought in and it was like, it was hard. It was a really tough situation for everybody because not only are you jumping time zones and traveling all the time, but the stress of that was 
it was a lot on all of us and the crew worked really hard and uh yeah we ended up pulling it off though we ended up continuing we went to alaska we were all over mexico we kept going and we went back to the caribbean and we filmed 48 properties in 2020 oh, uh, all, all over the world and and knock on wood nobody got covid in our crew it's a no. really beautiful show though i mean oh, you really you. like you know you got tons of drone shots and it's beautiful yeah no we were we and we shot each one of those locations in two days we were really booking we were going fast and the crew was great you know and you know we got it down we go in and we understand okay let's get our beauty shots let's get this let's get that and right you know and all those properties you know not all but most of them have called me to this day going oh my god i can't believe how the impact that this has had because people all over the world see these properties and want to go stay in them and that yeah. was part of what will and i when we created it we were like we want to create a show that you know, is not just like extreme makeover or a show like that. It's 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 a place you can go visit. Yeah. So people are really psyched about it. My wife is uh gay, which you know about is coming off back surgery and she she got into Mark Cronin's show Below Deck. Oh she, yeah. Which is apparently always on television. Yeah. <laughs> and, there's yeah. Below, and there's eight versions of Below Deck. But one of the things that you like it's a and I said to her, it's a different is it a different boat every time? She said, yeah, it's a different boat. I said, well, it's the same thing. It's like these boat people that own the yachts want this on television because people will rent their boat and or people will stay at the hotel that you're putting on television. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is a, you know, a deal for these people and it, it's good exposure. And, you know, I had done this show based on Extreme Makeover because I before this, you know, the, the vacation rental show, I did, you know, you asked earlier, how did I get into you know, this whole house building thing. And my agents had told me after I'd, I'd done a couple of different shows, I think Nashville Star and a couple of others. And then the, my agent came to me and said, you know, Extreme Makeover Home Edition is looking for a new showrunner. And would you be interested? And I said, absolutely. And they said, well, what do you know about home building? And I said, well, I own a tractor. I own a Kubota tractor and a, cha a two chainsaws. And I worked as a roofer in high school you know, so I think I know my way around a build site. And, yeah. and you know, I went in and met with ABC and Endemol and all the people. And they were like, wait a minute, you what? You own a tractor? What you live in? A, what are you doing? They, I'm just a, you know, a farm kid from upstate New York. Who's so, Falls. Who's Falls. You know, a little, little known story about Who's Falls. 3,000 people and 24 bars. There you go. <laughs> what does that tell you? <laughs> so... Yeah. There used to be, then it all went away. But anyway, no, I did Extreme Makeover and that show changed my life. That was another one of those unbelievable, I feel so give, blessed to have gotten the opportunity to, you know, do that and work with that team and the, the crew and all the people who we built homes for. I mean, boy, you know, it's a cliche when you say these heroes, but boy, when you really meet these people who are in the face of unbelievable adversity. Right. They are so great, graceful and appreciative and positive. You really, and the whole community, I mean, we'd have, you should see these builds are unbelievable, Tim. I mean, we, we, I remember up in North Dakota, we went up there and we had like 25,000 people show up wow. for, this, for this young kid who was, who we were building for there, or like after Joplin, Missouri, we built seven homes in seven days. You know, we had 20,000 volunteers, 22 builders. Right. I mean, it was massive. It was like an army. I mean, we built these, we built those homes in 106 hours. You know, that show was so good. And, and, you know, in the unscripted world, it speaks to the, like my wife and I watch that show botched and yeah, yeah. that's a little different. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little different, but it's not in that these two surgeons change people's law. I mean, people yeah. in there, cancer survivors who had breast yeah. augmentation to correct the cancer and it went south and they changed their lives. Yep. So the reward of, of those shows were, where it, that always works and it works for me too. You know, you know me, I'm the most cynical guy on the planet, yeah. but look, I think we all wish that, you know, if something catastrophic happened in our lives, that our friends and neighbors would come together to help us out, you know, yeah. and I think and they do. And that's what that show delivered, that wish yeah. fulfillment that 
there are good people out there in the world. And boy, yeah. did that show show it to us. I mean, everywhere we went, you just saw from the bricklayers who were helping to the landscapers to the all these volunteers would come out because they just believed, hey, let's do something good. Let's give back. And the power of that, the power of community, you know, when you watch all of these people come together to help their local, you know, we did one in Bucks County, Pennsylvania up there. Yeah. And, and, you know, we had this young wife, she had lost her husband and she was raising her baby by herself. And, oh, it was unbelievable. The, the night her baby was born, her husband had died unexpectedly, young oh guy. Gosh. Terrible story. But anyway, everyone came together in Bucks County there and built a beautiful home. And, and you know, and we tried in those seasons to set people up. I know a lot of people say, well, you built these big homes and then they had tax burdens. And, but we tried to set them up as best we could to, to, for success, you know, to yeah. not, not leave them with more bills than when we came, you know? Um, we're going to take another break and you've talked about all these good shows. Now, now we're going to go <laughs> talk about Son of the Beach. Yeah, the <laughs> After show. this, uh, I'm talking to my old friend, George Vashore, and you're listening to It's Radio with TV's Tim Stanton.